What's up guys, this is Post Production Pi with SRLounge.com here with another Lightroom 4 Edit slash Mixology tutorial. Now we're going to flip things around a little bit, we're going to change things up, and this is because of your guys' feedback. So we appreciate that a lot. And here's the two things that we've been hearing over the last couple weeks, and this is why we're changing things up. Number one, we've heard quite a bit about, you know, we're uploading a lot of new Mixology tutorials and recipes for the SR Lounge Lightroom 4 preset system users. Now a lot of you basically said that while these Mixologies are cool, they don't really help the rest of us because, uh, you know, we basically teach only how to do them with the presets and so they only benefit Lightroom 4 preset system users. The second thing we've been hearing a lot about, which is, uh, is basically people have been asking, well, why do I need to purchase the Lightroom 4 preset system? We're going to address both of these questions and concerns by switching things around a little bit. And here's what we're going to do. With every single Mixology tutorial, what we're going to do is show you guys first how to create the effect using the SR Lounge Lightroom 4 preset system. So we're going to create the Mixology based on the preset system. You're going to find out how easy it is and just how few clicks and how quick it is to get the effect that we're going for. Afterwards, we're going to teach you guys basically the standard way without using the preset system of how we would get that exact same effect. This way, those that are using the Lightroom 4 preset system can benefit by basically being able to better understand and learn the preset system and also add new recipes, while those that aren't using the preset system can still benefit by just learning how to use these uh, kind of tips and tutorials in improving their post-production and everything like that. Also, you guys will see just how effective the Lightroom 4 preset system is in improving and speeding up your workflow. Alright guys, so let's get started. We're going to start first with this image and we're going to go over this tutorial with the yellow violet crush stylized color look that we have in this uh, preset right here, which is number 33. And what this effect does basically is this is kind of a, a film effect that I pulled from Hollywood Films where it kind of creates a very high contrast look while also adding a little bit of yellow violet uh, toning into the highlights as well as into the shadows. So add some yellow into the highlights and that's mainly to preserve kind of skin tones and, and kind of brighten up the highlight areas a little bit with that yellow toning. And then it drops some violets into the shadows to kind of create a really nice uh, color system and color scheme. So let's get started and the first thing we do after we apply this preset is we're going to go to our base adjustments and we're going to adjust our exposure because we know that with the preset system we still have to adjust exposure as well as our white balance to wherever we want. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take it up one stop and then to dial in my correct exposure I'm just going to go over or my correct white balance I'm just going to go over here and just tweak a little bit until I get to a white balance that I like. And I think at 5300 it looks pretty good. So let's take a glance at that we'll hit tab to remove both palettes and we can see what it looks like before and after. You can see how quickly we got there as well. Let's show you guys some other images. This basically is a very stylized effect and so when you're applying this effect you want to be using on images that have kind of a very stylized look to them. Like for example you don't want to typically be using this effect on portraits because it's going to cause kind of funky effects in the uh, skin tones and stuff like that. But for shots that are kind of more cinematic, that are kind of more just kind of moody overall in general, uh, it's a really nice effect. And let's go and find another image actually. And there's one that I'm thinking of which is this shot that was taken uh, on this train track and we shot it actually at 1 80th of a second so that we get kind of some blur in that motion so we kind of capture some of the motion as opposed to freezing it all and I think it adds a really nice little amount of motion to the overall image and everything like that. So let's apply this exact same effect. We're going to bring over our left panel, we're going to go to My Mixology and we're going to apply the Yellow Violet Crush and then all we're going to do is dial in our base adjustments to get a correct exposure. I'm going to go up to let's say plus 1 half and then what we'll do is do a little bit of tweaking on our uh, temperature a little bit just to warm it up a tiny bit. And you can see that this effect does a really nice job of just kind of adding some nice warmth to the highlight skin tones and then kind of creating that violet in the background and it kind of adds just that nice color scheme to the overall image. So here's the before and then here is the after. It's a very moody, very stylized kind of look and so because of that it's not going to fit with every single type of image. So we want you guys to kind of understand what it will work well with. Alright, so let's move on. Let's find an image that we want to actually show you guys how to create this effect on. So let's do it to this image. What I really like is I feel like this works really well on images that have a decent amount of highlights, but my, primarily they have quite a bit of shadows where you'll see kind of that violet effect in those deep shadows. So this is a good candidate for this effect, I think, and we're going to jump in and first show you guys basically how to do this with the mixologies. 
All right, so as usual, we're always going to start out with a standard import preset, which should have been applied to your images when you actually bring them into Lightroom. So we're going to apply standard import, and then what we're going to do from here is we're going to go down to our base adjustments, and we're going to go to our detail, do a light boost in detail. We're going to skip over contrast. We're going to do a medium darken just to darken up our blacks a little bit. We're going to also do a light amount of saturation. Um, just to, well actually it's regular saturation. And then we're going to go down to vignetting. We're going to do a light vignette. We're going to hit our neutral curves because we want to add a little bit of punch to it. We're going to add an ivory neutral punch. And then we're going to go down to our color toning and we will add the yellow violet complementary color scheme to this image. Now from here we've adjusted our settings and of course we always create these effects based on a properly exposed image. Because this image was a little bit underexposed to begin with, we're going to need to make a, an adjustment at this point. But we want to save out this preset right now as our Mixology preset. Now for those of you that are on the Lightroom 1.1 system, it's already saved out under yellow violet crush under the stylized color uh, number 30 category. So you don't need to save it out again, but if you were to, we would go and click plus. We're going to hit check all, and then we're going to unselect white balance, lens profile corrections, transform, and chromatic aberrations, because this is all included within the standard import preset, and your white balance is something we want to adjust on each preset. We're going to save this into the MyMixology folder, choose a preset name, and then you would save it out. Again, we're not going to save because we already have it. Now from here, this is when you'd actually adjust your uh, exposure and your white balance to get it where you want. So what I would do is just open up my base adjustments. I'm going to dial in probably a plus one to my exposure. And we're going to go over to white balance just to pull it down a titch. Uh, I just want to pull it down a little bit so the skin tones aren't too crazy. If your skin tones are kind of oversaturated or whatever, you can also pull out a vibrance brush where you can kind of pull out the saturation of the skin tones. Um, or it's going to be a desaturation brush, not a vibrance brush. All right, guys, so let's take a look at this effect. So here is the before, and here's the after. I'm just hitting backslash to see both of these. And now let's go through and do it with the standard uh, sliders and everything. We're going to go through it without the Lightroom 4 preset system. So you saw how few clicks we did with the Lightroom 4 preset system and just how fast it was. If I wasn't talking, I could go through this entire thing in probably 10 seconds. Now let's go over and reset everything. So we're going to hit uh, Control shift r or Command shift r on a Mac. We're going to shrink up our left side panel right here. And let's get started by dialing in our settings. All right, guys, so as per usual, with all of our adjustments, we always start from the largest adjustments and work our way to the finer details. Now, with this image, white balance is close to where I want it, and to really dial it in exactly, I need to first adjust my exposure, because that's kind of the first most noticeable thing with this image. So I'm going to hover over the exposure bar, and I'm going to shift and click up to bring it up to about 0.99 or 1.0. You can also just type in 1 if you want. And then we're going to dial down temperature a little bit to about 5100 because I know I'm going to actually warm it up a bit when I add the yellow violet toning to it. Tint is good about where it is. I might just go a little bit more on the green side, just a tiny bit. All right, now we're good here. We're going to drop down. We don't want to add contrast necessarily with this. Uh, and the reason why I kind of avoid adding contrast most of the time with the contrast slider is because I don't necessarily want contrast over the skin tones to be enhanced as much as just overall in the image. And so I like adjusting my contrast first with my tone curve and last with the actual contrast slider. I also like to adjust contrast with just our basic uh, highlight through blacks, kind of the tone curve sliders in the basic panel as well. So what we're going to do first is we're going to pull down our highlights a little bit just to kind of bring them down a tiny bit. We're going to also pull down the shadows just to kind of create a little bit of contrast in the image. We're going to again create additional contrast by adding some whites just so we get some pure whites in the highlights. And then we're going to pull down blacks to negative 30 just to really kind of crush and get some deep blacks in those super dark shadowy areas. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to go to clarity. We're going to bump it up to about plus 20 just to increase overall mid-tone contrast and detail. We're going to go to vibrance and click up to about plus 30-ish. And you guys can always tweak this later on, but plus 30 is good right now. And we're going to adjust our saturation as well to plus 10. And at this point, you might start seeing that we need to adjust temperature once again. But let's go back to that after we have uh, dialed in kind of the uh, split toning settings to add in the coloring. All right, so let's drop down to the tone curve, and this is the part we need to create our contrast tone curve. So what I want to do is create an S-curve where we kind of boost the highlights while pulling down the blacks a bit. So we're going to boost highlights over here in the top side, and this is really more of the whites range. And then we're going to boost highlights. Actually, we're going to pull down highlights just a bit. We're going to pull down the mid-tones a bit, 
and then drop down the shadows and blacks a tiny bit as well. All right, I want to be careful that we don't go too far with these adjustments, so I'm going to pull my midtones out just a tiny bit more, and then bring the midtone highlights up, and then bring my whites up just a tiny bit. All right, so kind of adjust your preference on this. I want to get just a nice kind of poppy look, but not too contrasty. Again, this is kind of a very stylized, high contrast look to the image. So we're going for that kind of crushed contrast, but not too far. Again, we don't want to pull down blacks to the point where we basically crush all detail. And a great tip for you guys is remember to use your highlight alert and your clipping alert by hitting J to see exactly which areas are crushed and which areas are blown. So we can see in blue the crushed area over here is just the super dark shadowy area off the right side. Nothing important. Hair detail is very much intact and that is kind of the most crucial part of that. Because we don't want to crush our hair detail because it does get kind of nasty if it prints out all black. Alright, so that looks pretty good where it's at. We're going to drop down now to split toning. And for split toning, what we're going to do is we're going to add yellows in the highlights, uh, and then we're going to add violets in the shadows, and then we're going to adjust our balance to kind of get a nice balance between the two. So let's go into highlights, and then let's go first adjust kind of the uh, highlight side. So let's go up to about 60 for our highlights. I'm going to pull down the saturation, but what I like to do is actually dial in a color, and then close this and just pull down the saturation to where I like it. We're going to keep it a little bit on the stronger side because we're going to make a couple adjustments in a second. And then we're going to go to our shadows. We're going to go down to, let's go to the purple side. Let's go to 265 is good. And once again, let's close that up and then drag down our saturation down to about 30. All right. And then we're just going to tweak the balance basically until we find a nice mix. If I end up going down too far on the negative side, it's going to get too kind of pink in the skin tones. And so I kind of want to leave it more a little bit on the highlight side where we're kind of emphasizing more of the highlights over the shadows. So we get a little bit into that uh, of the pinks and kind of violets in the shadows, but we get a lot more of the highlight yellows in kind of those bright highlight tones. That looks pretty good where it's at. I'm not sure exactly where the preset was, but this is pretty dang close. All right, next thing we're going to do is we're going to close up our split toning panel. We're going to go down to detail and we're going to do our basically our standard sharpening. And so what we do is zoom in on this. And the nice thing is about when we use the kind of the preset system, it comes with the standard sharpening setting that we use, which has a really nice overall effect. And it doesn't really over sharpen, but it kind of creates a nice just sharpened look to it. So we're going to bring our radius up to about 1.5. We're going to bring our detail. Let's actually bring the detail down to around 10. And because I, I, I don't want to necessarily sharpen all the fine grain detail because it's going to add a lot of grain to the image. And also over skin tones, it's going to kind of sharpen too much of the pores and too much of the detail that we don't want sharpened. We're also going to raise up our mask a little bit. So let's bring up the mask, let's say to about 30. And once again, this is going to, again, avoid over sharpening with the, uh, you know, the pores and kind of the fine grain stuff like that, areas that we basically don't want sharpened. So that's pretty much the standard import preset sharpening right there that we use. Okay, so we're going to close this up. We don't really need to do anything with the noise reduction because it actually looks pretty okay where it's at right now. All right, we're going to close this up. We're going to go down to our lens corrections. The last thing we're going to do is add a bit of a vignette just to pull in the, uh, just kind of pull in the overall emphasis down to the center of the image where our couple is. And again, with my vignettes, I like them to be very, very subtle. So I'm going to have the amount only at negative 15. We're going to pull the midpoint all the way down to 10. So it drags that subtle darkening effect all the way into the image. And so it's not such a strong effect overall. All right, guys, from here, we need to make a couple last adjustments just to fine tune our temperature and our tint. And all I'm going to do is just basically pull down temperature a little bit more so that we get the right mixture on their skin tones. And then we're going to tweak tint just a little bit more on the green side. I'm going to pull down temperature just a tiny bit more. Okay, so that's it. We're done. We should have basically the same effect that we got with our mixology recipe. Uh, and if I hit before and after, you can see the before and after on that image. Again, it does a really nice job of adding that kind of stylized color. This is one of the complementary color schemes. And so you have a really nice kind of color scheme with the yellow and purple that complements each other very well. That's very much kind of one of those film effects that you see often in, in Hollywood color grading. 
All right, guys, so hopefully you guys enjoyed this effect and this tutorial. And uh, hopefully you also saw just how effective the Lightroom 4 preset system is in really speeding up the workflow. Now, I would always say to people, look, if you guys are editing one image at a time, if you only go out and shoot casually, you only want to produce one image, then there's no point in purchasing Lightroom 4 presets. But if you're editing hundreds of images or even thousands of images, you can see how much of a time saver something like this is because we basically pulled off something that took, you know, five minutes, ten minutes to do in just adjusting each individual slider, we pulled that off using the Lightroom 4 preset system in just five, six clicks. All right, guys, so if you guys are producing a lot of images, the Lightroom 4 preset system, definitely something you guys want to take a look at further. All right, guys, we'll see you guys with the next Lightroom 4 edit and mixology tutorial.